know what I'm saying? The artists here in the Embracing Democracy Test. Great. Colleen, can you tell us a little bit about um, how you got your beginnings in art and, um, and then a little bit about your work? I, I mean, I'm, 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 I've always been, I'm, I, I started painting very early. I was, you know, like most kids, drawing with color, you know, crayons, and I, I just continued doing it. And it was always a big part of my life that I never lost interest in. And, you know, eventually I went on to study, um, get a BFA at UCLA. So, and, and now, you know, take it to a professional level. Great. So, um, Great. My, my work, uh, I like to think of my work as being uh, somewhat like, uh, like folk art or folk music, that it, it's it's in interaction with certain with you know things that are going on in the world that mm -hmm. are usually considered you know it, it, it gets labeled political art, um, which I think you know I mean is is true in that my 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 work deals explicitly with certain with people or sort of people and figures and events. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, I think it's it's a misleading label because I think. Any published or you know uh, promoted display image or statement is is a political act, and it can be a very political statement to make art that has nothing to do with anything that's going on in the world, especially you know, during wartime or something. You know, to to do art that that is is you know say very conservative or neoclassicist is also a political statement. I think that is revealed a lot in the art that is favored by. Dictatorial regimes, like the art that, that Mussolini or Hitler or, or Saddam Hussein liked. Mm -hmm. it, it tells you something about their character. So true, so true. So, can you tell us a little bit about this piece here that's right behind you? This, this is a, a, actually the oldest painting in the show. It's a couple years old. From, uh, it's a portrait of Minister of uh, who was assassinated in Pakistan uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a number of paintings um, involving assassinated figures, and you know, I think that the, the act of assassination is, you know, it changes it changes someone from from a, a living, you know, political figure to some to usually something a lot more. It's, it's, right. it's almost a political canonization process that Absolutely. whatever problems that someone had in life or controversies usually get. You know, lost over when they when they become a victim of assassination, and it's all. But it's, it's also it's very tragic because when someone becomes canonized for their beliefs, it's usually a sign of those beliefs also, or that movement also being in a way dead. That uh, once a political figure or political movement becomes historical and and saintly or you know, non-controversial, it also has very little power or ability to change anything. So uh, we were actually at the opening of the show. I heard a lot of people saying how she was a martyr, and she pretty much knew that um, she was going to be assassinated at some point, and she did it anyway. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, I can't I can't speculate on what was going on in her mind. That she was being told to basically stay out of the streets and not to go to rallies and not to wave to people from her motorcade and things like that. And she defied that. I mean, you have to respect the decision that if you're going to, you know, make a political move and, you know, be a representative for change, a representative for, for political progress, you can't, you can't necessarily keep yourself safe. Right. And, I mean, this is, you know, for good or, or bad, this is in any, in any situation when you decide to be a, a spokesperson for something, you, know, something you can't, you're sacrificing a certain amount of personal well-being mm -hmm. to do that. And, mm -hmm. You know, in all fields, it, it, the level of danger can vary, but it's, it's something of, of, of it's, a, it's a symptom of public life, you know? Good. So. Good. Um, and this other piece here behind you, yeah, this is a more it's a very rich, a lot going on in this. Um, you can actually yeah, sit here very, and stare at it for hours. This is a well-worked surface. There's a, a whole piece of fabric that's been collaged onto the thing. We also have texture paint that's been mixed with sand and uh, modeling paste and other sediment um, to give it some, some texture and some body. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is a more recent painting uh, based on the uh, protest and revolution in Egypt. Okay. In January, February. So, this
this. Um, and you're Egyptian. Yeah. So how does that affect you, and how do you feel about what's going on well, so far it's, away? It's, yet you're Egyptian, yet you're American. I mean, I mean, part of me was was uh, sad that I wasn't there, that I sort of missed the, that historical moment. Mm -hmm. But I think everyone, you know, everyone has their different responsibilities in their different positions. And there's a role of play being not being an Egyptian in the United States to being an Egyptian American and being, you know, to an extent a voice for that situation mm -hmm. in this country. That's, you know, it's, it's a role to play too. And it's maybe less, less exciting and, and less sexy, but, you know, there's, there's a job to be done there too. Uh, and it's, an, it's an amazing time. It's a very important time in the Middle East. We're seeing, you know, popular people's movements and so and, much and change. It's, change and it's all it's all still in, very much hanging in the balance, and it's hard to say where it's going to go. But uh, I think the one thing that we can say for sure is that it, it's never going to be the same. Right. And that I think uh, with the recent history of the region, that uh, can't be that bad. Of it's a thing. true. It's true. So. Now you have two more pieces in the show. I think the closest one is this piece. Tell me about this piece. What's going on here? This, um, this is also sort of a uh, part of the, the series that I was doing right around the time of the revolution that mm -hmm. uh, was heavily uh, thematically impacted by the, the, the revolutionary movement. Uh, but this is, is more of a historical perspective, and paintings like this, I sort of, I, I think of them as being kind of a, a montage rather than a collage, mm -hmm. sort of a collage of images, but the way they're organized, it's not, it doesn't have the same sort of juxtaposition of, of cut images as right. a collage, it's more of a blended transition and layering mm -hmm. of images. More, it's more. I think there's something more cinematic and more sort of, you know, simultaneous in, you know, that all of the images are on top of each other and bleeding into each other and partly obliterating each other. Yeah. And that's sort of the, you know, it's something that I, I, I like to sort of think as a model for my painting. I think of like the, you know, cities where where it's been continuously li lived in for hundreds of years. And you see the layering of. Architectures and, History and, 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 and graffitis and mm -hmm. all sorts of different things that have accumulated over time, and that's you know that that particular type of of postmodern condition. Mm -hmm. uh, and this we have, we have images of, of different protest movements uh, in the history of the Middle East. Uh, this, this figure here is uh, Omar Mokhtar, who was a famous anti-colonial uh, rebel in Libya against the Italian occupation in the beginning of the century. Um, we have images of modern protesters and uh, other protesters from different movements. So it's sort of a historiography of, 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 yeah, legacy of, of resistance is the name of the thing. Very rich work. So tell me about this piece. Well, this, um, first off, it's, it's organized as sort of a, a news program split screen where you have the interviewer and the sort of news image, uh, and that being the, the structure that a lot of information comes to us, mm -hmm. and it's sort of the frame in which, you know, a lot of information <laughs> yeah. is, is processed and disseminated in that. It's and a discussed. law of nature. And within, within that, you have the, the, the news image and the, the reporter and moderator literally elbowing into each other. Uh -huh. um, the, the image here uh, is from the, the protests in Egypt, where protesters were actually using Coca-Cola to wash their eyes, to neutralize the effects of tear gas, the acid in, in Coca-Cola. Oh, wow. Because you, you also they tell you in, 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 in like activists use vinegar often neutralize the tear to gas? neutralize tear gas. Oh, wow. So they, uh, I guess Coca-Cola was readily accessible. Um, wow. So they were washing their eyes are serious, that's pretty normal. I've been very fortunate. We also, if you notice, there's, there's, a, there's sort of a subtle between the, the, the sort of partial image of the former president, Mr. Mubarak, mm -hmm. with sort of the deafness of him can't, okay, gesturing that he can't really hear, like, what's, what's that you're saying? And we have sort of the blindness of the protester watching his eyes. Mm -hmm. And the muteness of the mumbleless reporter, who is supposed to be the 
the, you know, the, the, the voice, the, the, voice, the, the moderator, the interpreter, the meaning. who is actually mouthless, but there's a sort of period where people see who will speak and what kind of right. subtle um, uh, image going on there. That's great. Also, we have the river's lodge, it's sort of patterned, patterned paper. Mm -hmm. which, so, uh, gives it texture, but also there's, there's, there's a meaning to it also for me in the, the, the idea of the, the arabesque, the abstract pattern that is, I think, in, what, in some ways it, it's, meta, it's a metaphor for how the Middle East is often viewed in that. The image of the Middle East is that it's, it's, it's beautiful and decadent, but sort of mute and, and you know, uh, docile. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the, the Middle Eastern tradition, the Oriental tradition, the Orient is a place of, of decadent richness and, and abstractness. And the abstractness becomes, when it's reflected back mm -hmm. by sort of the Western perspective or the, the, the Western interpreter, it becomes reflected back in that for, for a, a Middle Eastern artist, on the one hand, it's, there's a rich tradition there of abstract art. And arabesque and, and, and the tessellation. And that had a meaning and had a purpose and, and was used in different ways. And it's, it's good to use that and work with that and to know your tradition. But also, on the other hand, to be sort of told why aren't you working with your tradition? You should be doing abstract geometric mm -hmm. art. It is a form of, of silence, it's a form of, of sort of demanding that you remain historical and not current. Right. That modernism is Western. And tradition is Eastern. It's Eastern. That if you, and if you are, if you, if you want to be an authentic, you know, Eastern artist, and this is something I think that African artists and Asian uh -huh. artists also deal with, that it's the like, idea yeah, yeah, of, of, of the tradition and the weight of the tradition from your own, you know, your own background, and also from outsiders, that they both sort of cross on you with the idea of tradition and the weight and how you should relate to that, and that <laughs> modernism, which. Really, if you look at the history of modernism, it's a very international movement. But to say that modernism is, is, is a Western, you know, European or North American, Atlantic tradition, you know, and that to, to take part in that, you are being Westernized, you're being in a way colonized, you're allowing yourself to be colonized. It's a very complex situation that has to be negotiated, and that's right. something that I think I'm, I'm referencing. You're doing well. This. So, you know. The image is, is, is branded on the skin, the, the pattern, and it's something that is, is the background of every other image that is layered onto it. Anger, frustration. Khalid, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.